Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. On this video there's a few things to negotiate about. So I am going to be talking with you about Paul Pogba. Then I'm going to be giving you Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's list of transfer targets. Of course I've already done two videos today. This morning I'll give you my starting 11 prediction for the Aston Villa Manchester United game. And also to earlier on, I give you my reaction to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's press conference ahead of the game, didn't I? So yeah, so let's delve into news on Paul Popper. So, uh, Solskjaer's already confirmed that he wants Paul Popper to stay at Manchester United. And it's looking very, very likely that Paul Popper will be at Manchester United for next season. Now... I think there's a possibility chance that, you know, Paul Pogba could end up signing a new long-term contract at Manchester United. Obviously, you know, as it stands at the moment, Pogba has got a year left on his Manchester United contract. But there's also an option of a further year. And he's on just under 300 grand a week on his current contract. So, Paul Pogba is one of the highest paid players at Manchester United. Now, don't forget we paid £89 million for him from Juventus back in 2016. So, as it stands at the moment, Paul Pogba is our most expensive signing. Now, obviously, you know, Paul Pogba is out with injury earlier on in the season. You know, he had an ankle injury. So, reflects on that. I haven't really had a perception on Pogba, but I've had a perception on him since the resumption of the season because I think he's made a fantastic impact since the resumption of the season. Um, you know, his combination with Bruno Fernandes in our midfield has been absolutely fantastic. Um, but he has, you know, done very, very well. Now, I'm surprised that Paul Pogba is still at the football club because at one point it was looking very, very imminent that he was going to be leaving Manchester United because, of course, last summer, Paul Pogba was relentlessly linked to a move to Real Madrid. The main explanation why Pogba's move to Real Madrid didn't materialise last summer was reflecting on the substantial amount we put on him because we said last summer we wanted around £180 million. Real Madrid were not willing to meet that valuation but Pogba said last summer he was seeking for a new challenge and publicly admitted that he wanted to leave Manchester United. And he was talking about Real Madrid last year about his dreams of playing under Zinedine Zidane. Then obviously, you know, there were stories about Paul Pogba making a return back to Juventus uh, because don't forget, Paul Pogba did enjoy four good years with Juventus. And like I said, you know, swap deals were high on the agenda before the resumption of the season. You know, Juventus were willing to offer a couple of their players for Pogba. You had Real Madrid, Real Madrid, they're willing to offload a couple of their players to try and get a deal over the line for Pogba. Um, of course, you had uh, PSG um, in for him as well. You know, Barcelona have also been in for him in the past. Pogba's agent, Mini Raliola, you know, in the last couple of years, he's been in the process of trying to get his client a transfer away from Man United completed. We've been very, very critical of Mini Raliola, reflecting on some of the comments he has said since the turn of the year. Aid Woodward, I think, um, had negotiations with Mini Raliola um, at the turn of the year in that, because at that point, there was a lot of uncertainty over Paul Pogba's future. But we said, you know, if we had a sold Paul Pogba, we wouldn't. We would have wanted around one hundred and fifty million pounds, you know. Because I said, if we do sell him, it's very imperative that we get more than the eighty nine million pounds that we did pay for him. I think Pogba um, has made over the, made um, around hundred and forty appearances now for us, or something like that. He has won two trophies at the football club, and that was the Europa League and the League Cup in his first season. You know, don't forget. I think we did make a mistake by getting rid of Pogba when he was younger um, because we had him when he was young under Ferguson but the main explanation why we had to let him go is due to limited appearances. You know, this is why Pogba had left Manchester United. Uh, Pogba as well, you know, did enjoy a very, very difficult time under the Jose Mourinho where he really, really did. And I think Paul Pogba got one of his best wishes when Jose Mourinho had been sacked from the football club. He got one of his uh, best wishes. He got one of his best wishes when you know when he'd been sat by the football club, you know. But yeah, I'm surprised you know that Paul Pogba is still at Manchester United. By the way, since the resumption of the season, he's been playing in that deeper central midfield position, you know, as Paul Pogba. 
But I think, you know, that's where he looks more effective. And he's, what, now 27 years of age, so he has still got a lot of years ahead of him. Uh, Solskjaer was saying the other week that he does a, he, he says that Paul probably does not want to finish his Manchester United career with no regrets. So there's a possibility chance that Pogba could sign a new long-term contract at Manchester United because, to be fair, we have extended a lot of players' contracts since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got recommended in, but... On the other hand, we're still facing a dilemma with the contracts because we've still got around eight players' contracts that are due to expire next year. Don't forget, uh, Matic was the one that recently signed a new contract. He signed a three-year deal with Manchester United to keep him at the club until 2023. It wasn't too long ago that we'd extended Matic's contract for a further 12 months. But he's been given this three-year contract reflecting on his good run of performances because Matic has become an integral part of our team. Early on in the season, he was behind the likes of Fred, McTominay and Pereira. But, he's, you know, recently he's done very, very well. You know, this has been his third season at Man United. We paid £40 million for him from Chelsea back in 2017. And since his arrival with us, I think he's made around 114 appearances for the club and scored around four goals. So yeah, so that's the news on Paul Pogba anyway. Now, let's give you uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's list of transfer targets. So you know the players that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to recommend into the football club now. One of those players is Jadon Sancho from Borussia Dortmund. Now, I think Jadon Sancho still remains our number one priority target. Now, like he updated you recently... Uh, Christian Fark, the German football expert, he said that Borussia Dortmund have notified Man United that we've got until the 10th of August to sign Jadon Sancho or the deal is off. So this is, you know, what it has recently said. Now, you had Ian McGarry and you also had Duncan Castles the other week saying that Jadon Sancho had agreed personal terms with Manchester United and it said he agreed a five-year contract with the football club with around £140,000 a week. But there's no fee that's yet come to an agreement between us and Borussia Dortmund. And I think Borussia Dortmund's asking price does seem to be the stumbling block. Now, Dortmund have said on several occasions that they want over £100 million for Sancho. I think they do value him at around £108 million. We have said uh, quite a few times we are not willing to smash our transfer record for Sancho. We're not willing to do it. You know, it recently said that we're only willing to pay £50 million for Sancho, but £50 million is going to be nowhere near enough to convince Borussia Dortmund to offload him. Uh, Jaden Sancho did recently say, though, if uh, Borussia Dortmund... Dortmund refused to let him come to Man United, he will end up putting a transfer request in. I think we're the only team now that are in for Jadon Sancho anyway because uh, Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool has distanced himself away from Sancho. Pep Guardiola at Manchester City, he's distanced himself away from Sancho because there was reports coming out um, a few weeks ago saying that Sancho is open to returning to Man City because we were struggling to meet their asking price. Sancho is a former Manchester City player. He endured two years at Man City, but the main explanation why I left Manchester City is because he did not get any first-team opportunities in that. City sold Sancho for £8 million, so Dortmund got him from next to nothing, and this has now been Sancho's third season at Dortmund. And I've got to make an admission, he has been a revelation at Dortmund since his arrival from City and analysing his good performances in the few years he's been with Dortmund, his valuation has persistently grown. Sancho has got a contract with Dortmund still until 2022. Chelsea have also been in for him before. But we've been in for him for the last few years. You know, we first expressed our interest in Jadon Sancho back in 2017. We first expressed our interest in him don't forget, quite a few weeks ago, Jadon Sancho got fined £8,000 for breaking lockdown rules. You had the Brushy Dortmund CEO. The Brushy Dortmund CEO, he came out, um, was it, uh, last month, and he said that um, he expects Jadon Sancho to stay at Dortmund because he's convinced that no club's willing to meet their valuation. 
Then you had Lucien Favre, the Borussia Dortmund boss. He said that Sancho could still leave Borussia Dortmund in the summer transfer window. But Dortmund have said recently that they do remain relaxed over his future. But they've said a few times as well, if Sancho wants to leave, they will not step in his way. We've already said that we're willing to offer Jadon Sancho the number seven. Because, you know, we have got number seven vacant at the moment and we've had a lot of good number sevens up and down the generations. Like I said, Tino you know, Borussia Dortmund are known as a selling football club because they've let quite a few of their players go to the Premier League in recent years. They've also, there's players that they've also let go who didn't go to the Premier League, but they've recruited quite a few players in, in recent years. There were stories coming out back in February saying that Jadon Sancho had agreed almost every little detail of the move to Man United. He said the only thing that hadn't been agreed was the actual fee. But I want Sancho at Man United because he's well proven in the Premier League, plus he's a right winner and we are in search for the right winner and plus he's got a very, very good friendship with Marcus Rashford. So yeah, so Solskjaer still wants to bring him in. Another one of our transfer targets is Jack Grealish from Aston Villa. Now... During Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's press conference today, he um, was talking about Villa and Jack Grealish and he's warned our players that we must be aware of Jack Grealish because Solskjaer knows the threat that Jack Grealish can pose. And, you know, he's one of our priority targets and I think, you know, Jack Grealish is valued at around, what, £50 million there were stories coming out quite a few weeks ago saying that, you know, Villa have revealed their asking price and it said, you know, they do want around £80 million for Grealish. But surely if Aston Villa get relegated, you know, you'd probably get Grealish for around 40 or maybe £50 million. Uh, Jack Grealish's agent has spoken about um, his client's transfer saga and he's actually, you know, dismissed rumours that Jack Grealish has agreed to move to Man United because Tim Sherwood recently... The former Aston Villa boss, he had said that uh, Jack Grealish to Manchester United is a dumb deal. There were stories coming out quite a few weeks ago saying that Jack Grealish had alleg allegedly told his friends that he'd bought a house uh, near our Carrington training base. So that, you know, fueled some speculation up. You know, up until this point, Jack Grealish has spent the entirety of his career with Aston Villa. You know, he's been a Villa player since the age of six and he's been in their senior squad since 2014. And I think he has got a contract with Aston Villa until 2023. There was also stories coming out um, uh, the other week saying that, you know, Manchester City had entered the race for Jack Grealish. Um, we've already confirmed he's our preference over James Madison. So, yeah, so he's another one of... Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's transfer targets. Now, another one of our transfer targets, I think, is Declan Rice from West Ham. Now, I haven't spoken with you about Declan Rice for a while. Now, the story's coming out saying that Chelsea are looking to get Declan Rice on the board. Um, obviously, you know, West Ham have already said that they want around £70 million for Declan Rice. Of course, Declan Rice is a former Chelsea player. Um, he was in their youth setup for a good, was it, seven or eight years, but he actually never got in Chelsea's senior squad. Um, I think he's actually you know, been at West Ham as Declan Rice since like 2014. So, is this like now being his sixth season with West Ham? Declan Rice has got a contract with West Ham until 2024. Um, he can play as a defensive midfielder and a centre half, but he's predominantly a holding midfielder is, you know, Declan Rice. And I think he is only in his early 20s, but he's well proven in the Premier League. Uh, of course, played his trade in the Premier League. His break-up play, he breaks up the play very, very well. His hold-up play is also very, very good. So, would you take Declan Rice at Manchester United? You know, do you think he'd complement our midfield? So, he's another one of our transfer targets. Um, obviously, you know, another one of our transfer targets is Moussa Dembele from Lyon. He's a uh, Moussa Dembele from Lyon. Now, I've spoken with you about Moussa Dembele, didn't I, uh, recently? And he's a striker, and I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is in search for a striker. 
Of course, uh, an estimated guess, probably Moussa Dembele would cost us maybe around 40 or 50 million pounds. You know, this is now being Moussa Dembele's second season with Leon. Of course, Leon did pay around 20 million pounds in from Celtic in the summer of 2018. Moussa Dembele has got a contract with Leon until 2023. Moussa Dembele is proven in the Premier League because don't forget he's a former Fulham player. For Fulham, I think he scored like 19 goals in 64 competitive matches. So yeah, so he's another one of our transfer targets. Uh, by the way, um, Solskjaer is also looking to recommend the centre half in. But he has confirmed his transfer priorities. You know, Solskjaer said he wants to recommend a right winner in, a striker, and a centre defensive midfielder, but and he also wants to get a centre half in, but I think he wants to get a striker and a right winner in before he considers getting a centre half in. Now, you know the news regarding Nathan Ake from Bournemouth. Um, there was reports coming out saying that um, Solskjaer had had a conversation with Nathan Ake at full time, you know, after our 5-2 win against Bournemouth. And allegedly Solskjaer had said to Nathan Ake that we need a left-footed centre-half. But Solskjaer dismissed these uh, suggestions um, in his press conference today and he actually you know, laughed it off. But maybe you know, Nathan Ake is on our agenda and would you take him at Manchester United? You know, I think Bournemouth has said they'd want around £40 million if they was to offload him. You know, This has now been his third season with Bournemouth as Nathan Ake's. You know, he's got a couple of years left on his contract with Bournemouth. Bournemouth did pay £20 million in from Chelsea in 2017. And he's gone on to make around 100 appearances in the Premier League for Bournemouth. He also had loan spells with Reading and Watford. But when Chelsea did sell him, I think they inserted a buyback clause in his contract. And he's only in his... Is he 24? Is he in his mid-20s, 24, 25 years of age, Nathan Ake? So would you take him at Man United, you know... I think Kaladu Kulabail is also one of our transfer targets. You know, he's also been another centre-half on our agenda. But, yeah, we'll see. So, what players are Man United going to sign in the summer transfer window? Don't forget, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did um, say that he will avoid buying any rotten apples in the summer transfer window. Because the other week, he had warned our players he will not tolerate any rotten apples in the squad. He will not tolerate any rotten apples in the squad. By the way, like I said to you, our transfer budget has not yet been revealed. Solskjaer did say a few weeks ago he's unsure how much we're going to have to spend uh, because of the financial impact of the coronavirus pandemic. I think us and other leading clubs will decide on transfer budgets uh, when a decision is made on when fans can go back to games. Now, don't forget, our net debt is just over £429 million. That got revealed last month, was it? Because um, our debt had risen up by almost £130 million when Ed Woodward had revealed our financial figures. Ed Woodward did say the other month that we will remain competitive in the summer transfer market, but he did say, you know, we will not do business as usual. So he ruled out big transfers to Man United because the coronavirus pandemic did cost us around £28 million. It did cost us around £28 million. But we've got to be competitive in the summer transfer market. You know, we really, really have. Um, like I said, I've seen improvements under Solskjaer so far. Like I said, we've really, really improved in the transfer market under him. So far, Solskjaer's recommended five plays into the football club and spent just over £200 million. You know, last summer he brought Daniel James and wan and Harry Maguire in. And in January he brought Bruno Fernandes and Odina Gallo in. So that's very, very good to see. You know, like I said, um, Solskjaer has now been at the football club 18 months. So he has been with us a year and a half. He's also got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he got recommended into the football club. I think over 20 players have left since Solskjaer came in. Uh, Solskjaer's also promoted the youth very, very well. You know, the young players have been given their chances, which is good to see. Um, also, too, our record against the big six sides this season has been very, very good because we've taken, like, 18 points against the big six sides this season. So, these positives to take from his tenure so far. 
Don't forget, you know, we are in a good vein of form. We are unbeaten in our last 16 games in all competitions. And this is our best vein of form since Solskjaer was the interim manager. I think we are unbeaten in our last nine league games. And as it stands at the moment, I think we are just two points behind top four. We're two points behind top four. Um, also, too, Solskjaer mentioned in his press conference today that he demands maximum points. So he said we need to win all our five remaining games to secure Champions League to secure Champions League qualification because Solskjaer was recently talking about the importance of Champions League qualification. I'm very, very convinced that we can get it. You know, there's still a great chance, you know, that we could finish third. There is a great chance. Uh, there's also a great chance that we can win two trophies this season. That's the FA Cup and the Europa League. You know, we are into the... semi-finals of the FA Cup. You know, we've got Chelsea and we're more or less into our last day of the Europa League. So it's a chance for winning two trophies under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But, you know, Solskjaer did say that the battle for the top four will go down to the wire. Like I said to you, next season, our expectations will be to challenge for the Premier League title next season. You know, because this has now been the seventh season we have failed to mount any kind of title challenge up and we want to be up up there with the likes of Man City and Liverpool. You know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013, so the last time we won it was in Alex Ferguson's last season and all of that. And I'm very, very convinced that we can get a title under Solskjaer. Uh, if we can do that, it will be our 21st title because as it stands at the moment, we've won 20 titles and 13 of them are Premier League titles. Uh, so, as it stands at the moment, we are the most successful team in England. I've already uh, outlined the reasons why Solskjaer didn't get sacked from Manchester United because earlier on in the season, he was close to getting sacked because we had enjoyed our worst start to a Premier League season for 30 years. And at that point, you know, there was talks of Mauricio Pochettino coming in and there was also talks of Masmiliano Allegri coming in as well. But I still don't know if Solskjaer is the foreseeable future for Manchester United. But like I've said, it does deserve at least another season because it is a transition period and it has been a transition period for a while. And he is still in the process of rebuilding this Manchester United team because there's only five players that are his so far. You know, Solskjaer is inheriting the vast majority of Jose Mourinho's players because Mourinho brought 11 players in and there's only a few players that have left who Jose Mourinho brought in. There's still some players here from the Louis van Gaal era. There's still Matter here from the Moyes era. You know, there's still a couple of players here from the Alex Ferguson era. So Solskjaer does deserve more time at the football club. Earlier on in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial career, um, he worked out his transfer strategy and he said he wants to recruit young British talents to Manchester United. And, you know, three of the five players that he has brought in so far are British. You know, they are British, so let's just put that into the equation. Now, you know, we have got Aston Villa tomorrow at Villa Park. You know, this is a game that Manchester United must win. Uh, we have got a very, very good record against Aston Villa because we've only lost one of our last 42 Premier League games against them. And that defeat came back in 2010 when Gabriel had Bonnie Hall scored and it was 1-0. We were unbeaten in our last 20 away games against Villa. Like I said on the preview, Villa have not beaten us at Villa Park since 1995. And that is like now, what, 25 years ago? It's like now 25 years ago or something like that. You know, the last time Villa beat us at Villa Park. Uh, like I said, you know, we're fighting for top four. You know, Villa are facing a relegation battle. To be honest with you, I think Villa are going down. Uh, Aston Villa have got a few injuries as well. You know, Jack Grealish uh, did sustain a knock in, Liverpool, in Villa's 2-0 defeat to Liverpool, but um, Dean Smith's confirmed he will be available. Uh, Tyrone Mins, um, he recently sustained a knock, but he should be playing. But I think the players that won't be playing for really is Wesley, Matthew Target, Wesley, Matthew Target and Tommy. And I think, you know, they are doubts for Aston Villa. You know, but we drew the game early on in the season 2-2 and Solskjaer did recently say, you know, we haven't got an easy running. 
because I've said we've got an easy running and a lot of Man United fans have said it, but this we've got points to prove against the teams that we struggled against earlier on in the season. So let's just uh, put that into the equation. Uh, we've only got a few injuries. Uh, we've still, of course, still got Phil Jones out. Uh, we've still got Alex Tuanzebe out. I heard that Alex Tuanzebe is going to be out to September. Uh, Solskjaer today in his press conference did provide us with an update on Lindelof. And he did actually know say that Lindelof is going to be a doubt for this game because he sustained a back problem in the 5-2 win against Bournemouth, did Victor Lindelof. Um, in the last three league games, Solskjaer's gone uh, with the same team and that's the first time we've done that since November 2006. You know, so could he be doing it for the fourth game in a row, going, uh, naming an unchanged side? But, of course, if Lindelof can't play, then obviously you know, he'll have to put Bay there instead of Victor Lindelof. And I think he will stick with that 4-2-3-1 formation. But I'm very, very convinced you know, that we will be Aston Villa. But um, Solskjaer said, you know, Villa, you know, on his press conference, he was talking about them a bit. He said, you know, they're very powerful on the counter-attack and they're very, very good from set plays. So this is something, you know, Manchester United do need to be aware of. But I think, you know, Solskjaer's got a lot of confidence going into this game. You know, he's got a lot of confidence going into this game. Uh, it was a very good performance against Bournemouth. You know, Mason Greenwood, of course, scored twice in that game. Also got a goal in the Brighton game. So Mason Greenwood scored three goals in his last two starts for the club. He's on 15 goals this season for Man United. Solskjaer did recently say regarding Mason Greenwood is ready to play for England. He's ready to play for England um, at senior level. This has been Mason Greenwood's first full season um, in our senior squad. I think um, our attacking line now looks very, very good. You know, you've got Rashford, Greenwood and... Martial and I think between them all they've got 55 goals in all competitions this season which is very impressive you know this season Rashford's been playing out wide I know he can play centre but I think he looks more effective out wide because you know this season Martial has been playing in that central position you know he really really has uh, don't forget Solskjaer did also mention in the press conference that he feels vindicated um, in the decision to let Lukaku and Sanchez leave the football club last summer. They both left the football club last summer. You know, you saw Lukaku go to Inter Milan and you saw Sanchez also go to Inter Milan and all of that. So these are some of the stuff, you know, that I did mention during his press conference. But like I said, you know, regarding Solskjaer, he's gained managerial experience at Manchester United. He's gained it, you know, reflect on how long he's been here. He's learned quite a few stuff as well since he's been at Manchester United. You know, it's now, you know, this Man United, sorry, is now, the this is, Man United's been the third club in his managerial career because before he was at us, he was at Mulder, won a couple of Norwegian titles with them. And before he was at Mulder, he was at Cardiff. You know, he enjoyed a very, very short tenure with Cardiff. Did you know Solskjaer? The main explanation why I got sat some Cardiff is uh, because he got Cardiff relegated and all of that. But I was very, very critical of him earlier on in the season, but there's been a lot of problems at the football club for the last seven years or so, and this is one of the main explanations why we've been inconsistent. You know, we've had a lot of problems with the club's board. You know, there's been a lot of problems with Ed Woodward. There's also been a lot of problems with the Glazers. Uh, the main explanations is, you know, flex on how poor our recruitment policy's been. Also, two of us overpaying for players, you know, we're being criticised for that. Woodward's been at the football club since 2012 and, you know, the Glazers have been at the football club since 2005. You know, and in the last seven years, we've spent close to the billion pound range on players. And we've recruited over 30 odd players in since the Alex Ferguson era. So, yeah, so that's mainly everything to update you with today and... Like Solskjaer was recently saying, you know, we've had a, quite a few long-serving players at the football club. You know, there's still long-serving players now at the football club. You know, you've got David De Gea, that's approached his 10th year at Man United. You know, don't forget Solskjaer did say that David De Gea, you know, he's been the best goalkeeper in the world for the last 9 or 10 years. He also said this in his press conference. Has been a liability in the last couple of years, though, reflects on the mistakes he has made. David De Gea... Um, he's about to overtake Peter Michael, by the way, on appearances, like I mentioned. Um, you've got um, 
Rashford, that's been here for several years. You've got Martial now, that's in his fifth season at the club. You've got Luke Shaw now, this has been his sixth season at the club. You've got Juan Mata, this has been his sixth season at the, you know, the football club. So, you know, there's quite a few long-serving players at Manchester United. But like I said, um, in this unbeaten run, I have seen glimpses of the Alex Ferguson days. I really, really have, because we were so dominant under Alex Ferguson, you know. Ferguson endured 26 years, or was it 27 years at Man United? Endured 22, 23 years of success, because don't forget, Ferguson didn't win out in his first four years at the football club, and... But we did win a total of 38 major honours under Ferguson. So we've won the vast majority of our silverware under him. I think in total we've won about 46, 45 trophies. Uh, don't forget, you know, we've won three trophies since Ferguson left. And that was the FA Cup under Van Gaal and the Europe League and the League Cup under Jose Mourinho. So um, there you go. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon. There'll be more videos tomorrow.